All right, guys, Hatch Carver here again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and some big updates today on the potential of Rostermania as soon as Champions finishes. The teams that get into partnership will only have about three or four weeks to lock in some sort of roster in order to make sure Riot can confirm everything and get everything sorted. This is especially interesting because many players, their contracts are now at an end, including tens on Sentinels. If he wants to walk away from Sentinels, the option apparently lies solely with him. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Loads of great support recently. This just some Nats to mention because yesterday we saw some of the percentage numbers for the different weapons in the game. The Vandal actually on average is way above the Phantom here. So teams in general seem to have decided which weapon is the go-to. But yeah, the Phantom is still getting a lot of use by teams like 100 Thieves. And 100 Thieves will certainly be a team of notes in the coming minutes here. Firstly, this from Timothy. Now, I don't know if this guy has any idea what he's talking about, but he's followed by a lot of notable people in the Valorant community, and um, he must have some reason to believe what he says. Now, maybe this is just pure speculation on his part as to what the rosters are going to be and which teams are going to get partnered next year, but this is at least his prediction for next season. He's actually got four teams coming in from the South Americans. So this is the America's League, of course, but he's got four teams from Latin America, South America, and Brazil, Fury, Loud, Leviathan, and Crew. Now, um, I think it might be three, it might be four. I think Loud and Crew, I think it would be like certified. I'm not really sure about the the other teams we shall see. So then it's going to be six or seven teams from North America. Now I think Sentinels, 100 Thieves, Cloud9 and TSM, maybe Optic, like, um, you know, should be pretty much guaranteed. I would say that Sen 100T for sure. TSM I think is incredibly likely as well, given the League of Legends stuff. And um, yeah, I would say Cloud9 as well makes sense. I think those really should be locked in. The others, to me, are a bit of a question mark. And also the fact that he doesn't have Optic here, which is really interesting just because, like, um, he must have a reason to exclude Optic, especially because of what he goes on to say here in a second where, like, um, as Declan says, no optic interesting, and he says optic were never getting a spot. So, of course, this may just be speculation or he might have some reason to believe more than we do that optic won't get in because we've heard some interesting rumours that there might be something going on with optic and whether they get a spot or not next season because it's not about how good the roster is. It's about financials and you know, willingness to support else, you know, other things and it's obviously very competitive at the top there for getting into the franchise side. You know, the likes of FaZe aren't going to get in. We don't know what the future is for version one, the guards, all these organisations. Those orgs themselves don't necessarily know, but we can very well theorize that Sen 100 d TSM, Cloud9 probably should get in. But after that, you've only got, what, two or three more spots for North American teams, of which Optic may not be one of them, right? So he reckons NRG and T1, even though T1, we did wonder whether they would end up in the APAC League for one of the Korean spots, but he reckons they might be here in North America. Of course, that leaves out many big organizations, some of which I just mentioned to you guys. But also he goes on to say that, okay, if Optic don't get through, then for sure, let's say Optic to do well, let's say Optic win champions and then their organization doesn't get through to partnership, then surely some organization will want to pick up their entire roster if it turns out that roster actually wants to stay together. So he's theorizing that Sentinels are going to pick up the entirety of the Optic roster, which seems like that seems strange to me. I, I really doubt that's going to be the case. Like Sentinels, you know, obviously they, yes, they want to build the best roster in the world, but you know, Clout obviously is also a factor in their consideration. And do they, you know, do they want to get rid of Tens? They want to get rid of Shazam, like um, all these guys just to bring in the entire Optic team if Optic weren't to make it that seems strange to me but it's very possible that another organization might do that like um, let's say you're a TSM for example like your roster's been pretty terrible but you get through an Optic don't then you know why not just you know pick up the entire Optic roster that might be a sensible move for TSM if um, if that's a route they wanted to go so we shall see on that front but these have some very interesting names NRG of course like I think they're an organization that I would say are more positive than not that I will get a spot but it's still not guaranteed we just don't know right now but as I say and I think most sources have suggested that Sentinels, given what they've done, it should be an absolute lock for franchising next year. So they will be in, we believe, 99% sure. If that is, of course, the case, then the question is, what is the roster going to be? Because the roster hasn't been as good as it could be. There are upgrades that they could make out there. We don't know if Sick is returning, but we'll see some indications on that in a second. Now, the interesting part is, of course, they bought tens for a lot of money from the whole Cloud9 stuff. Like, um, I think 100 Thieves offered a lot of money, but Sentinels paid more. But they bought out the contract that he had. Therefore, that contract is now at an end, which is rather interesting for Sentinels. It actually gives great options for tens. So like his contract, we understand is at an end this year. This does not necessarily mean he's going to leave Sentinels or he's going to decide to leave. He may well decide to stay, but he is now free to explore offers from elsewhere. If he gets offers from any other team in the partnership worlds, like um, he will be able to take that offer because he will not be under contract anymore. His contract is set to expire. Therefore, Sen will have to offer either a lot of money or um, you know give him a great reason to stay if other organizations want 
to give him a go. So you would expect them to still renegotiate and make something happen here because we would expect Centos to get into the partnership sides. But again, he will be allowed to negotiate with other teams very shortly in discussions to potentially move elsewhere or Centos will therefore renegotiate and try and keep Tens on the roster. It's always an interesting one with Tens because obviously great and talented player, but he does bring a lot of, you know, pressure to the organization, the team and stuff like this. But I think it's sensible for Centos to try and keep Tens around. Whether other organizations will be super keen to get Tens, I think that's understandable. Whether they can pay enough or, you know, create enough impact on Tens to, for him to want to leave Centos, that's another question entirely. But our understanding is that partner teams have to submit some sort of soft roster lock roster by mid-October to give the developers enough time to finalize the logistics of moving players to the location of their respective international league. So that's one of the key points, actually, that the idea is, of course, that if you're a player in APAC, like you will have to move out to, you know, Korea or wherever they're going to host the league. And therefore, these organizations have to lock these things in relatively early to make sure the logistics can actually work out. So Tens, of course, will have quite some time to decide what he wants to do. My expectation is he probably will want to stay with Sentinels, but whether he gets a more attractive offer elsewhere is a big question mark, because if he does, then it's not like Sentinels have any say. If his contract is over, he's unrestricted. He can just walk away to a better deal if he wants to. Whether he will, of course, you guys can kind of make your mind up for that one in the comments section below. But that's also a big question. What does Sentinels do next year? Which players do they build around? Which players do they keep along? And which players do they let go? We already know that Zelsis has gone back to version one. They could probably get him back if version one don't get into franchising. But like, um, you know, even then, do they want to build around Tens, Sick, Dapper? Like, do they keep Shazam? Like, um, you know, does Zoms go somewhere? Like, you know, we really don't know what the situation is. Like, Shroud, we don't expect to be here next season, but honestly, who knows? So, Sentinels are probably due themselves for a large rebuild of their roster next season. You'd imagine that Tens would be a part of that, but, um, you know, they can't guarantee that they can lock him down if his contract is expiring. So, it's pretty interesting because some players, of course, have deals that go into next season and therefore they are effectively locked to their roster, which could be a big risk, actually, because if they're locked to their roster and their organization doesn't get through to partnership, then they will have to get bought out by another team. Whereas um, there'll be a lot of unrestricted free agents that other squads can acquire for free. So that's definitely a big talking point. Sick also to mention because he's been back in business the last few days. He's been streaming like every day recently, which is great to see for Sick. So it seems like he's feeling an awful lot better now. And um, yeah, well, maybe he's going to be a key factor in Sentinel's return next season as well. Will at tens at stay? That's a big question. And just to mention, right, because of course, Kaede, his girlfriend, actually fiance now, is of course a content creator at 400 Thieves. So you do have to wonder whether Kaede is like, look, tens, we can get a better if you at Thieves, this is the way to go. Of course, um, we expect them to get through to partnership if their roster isn't, you know, of course, like their roster's pretty good, right, Thieves, as, as it presently stands, but uh, theoretically, you know, Tens could be an upgrade in certain positions. So just one to keep your eyes on, because um, I think that's what a lot of people heads will go to, is like, well, if, if he's going to leave Sentinels, 100 Thieves is maybe the most sensible organization to go to, and it could make sense for a few different reasons. So definitely tweet your thoughts on that one in the comment section below. Let's talk champions, because 100 T are in action once again to Today, the entire team is now tested negative. Sean Gez is back in action. Good stuff all around. And let's talk about the games from last night. So, honestly, last night's games were pretty incredible. Liquid versus Paperx was the first matchup here. And Paperx, honestly, will really be kicking themselves about this because they feel like I'm sure that they should have won this series. They went up 12 10 on the Haven. And then Team Liquid brought it back. They took it to overtime. They won the overtime. And, um, and look at this in Paperx. Honestly, there was some crazy, like, these guys just understand Pearl better than anyone. But look at this spot right here on this Sage Wall. Look at over this. Honestly, just absolutely fantastic innovations these guys were initially bringing and, um, you know, trying to find some, some kills right here. Solkat actually sees him, but there's nothing you can really do about it. It's like, um, yeah, incredible stuff in Paper X. They dominated the Pearl, but um, and then it goes to the final map of the series, which was an ascent that honestly, Team Liquid looked pretty good. And honestly, like, they kind of surprised me with how lost at times Paper X looked, but Liquid are a great team. There's no getting around it. I thought we'd have a close series. I thought we'd have some overtimes in there. We did, and it was Team Liquid in the end that come out on on top. So once again, the second place curse is back in business officially, right? Because the second place curse has been whatever team places second at a previous international event falls off massively or has a difficult time going forward. It kind of happened to Loud last time out, right in Masters 2. It um, seemingly happened here at Champions to Paper X. All the optimism for this team turns out wasn't the case, really. They failed to even make it out of their group. So crazy scenes. Liquid make it through. And as I say, the second place curse gathers even more weight. Yeah, Paper X didn't even make it out of the groups. So it's crazy to think about, right? Not even into the play off bracket. The other series of the day, of course, was Zeta Division versus Loud. This was a very close map one here, actually, where it looked like for a time that Zeta might be able to put up a better fight than they did, but Loud took these guys down 2-0 the first time they played in the first side of the winner's bracket. They match up again in the
in the loser side. But this time it's Aspas and the Loud Boys that once again come out on top. They win the second map pretty comfortably in the ends. And um, I mean, yeah, Zeta Division go down. So Loud get through. And that honestly already creates some very exciting winner's bracket matches. One of them, for example, is Optic versus Liquid in just a few days' time. So when playoffs begins, Optic versus Liquid, that's going to happen. The other game also, Loud versus, I think, Leviathan. That's also locked in. We'll see that in a second. The other game's yet to be confirmed because there are still two more teams to get through to playoffs that we shall see very shortly indeed. So this is how it stands. So yes, Leviathan, Liquid, Optic, Loud, they qualified. The playoff bracket now looks like this. So yes, Optic, Liquid, Leviathan, Loud, those two teams or those two matches are locked in September 9th and 10th respectively. But today we've got two more massive games to determine which teams get out of the group. FPX versus Crew. First time around, FPX came out on top. I'm going to take FPX to come out on top again, but I think this can be a really close series, but I expect it to go a similar way than it did before. Close maps, but FPX just about to have enough. And then 100 Thieves Fnatic, again, a rematch of the first round. This was a big surprise to many people, including myself, in fairness. The 100 Thieves actually won this, but I did pick 100 T to get through this group. In fairness, I also picked Fnatic to get through. And from the evidence that we've seen so far, 100 Thieves have probably played like the better team, and they beat them the first time round. So look, I'm going to go for it again, and I'm going to say that 100 Thieves take down Fnatic at 2-1 and get through and qualify for the playoffs. But definitely in Twitter, your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. What do you think the future of 10s will be? Will he stay around or will he decide if there's an offer from 100 Thieves to go elsewhere? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us to YouTube gods. This is a good video. I was like you should see it as well. And I'll grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.